wife, I level up, level up, level up, level up. Let's get to work. When is too soon decide to, to decide to take control of your life? Never too soon, right? I, the reason why I did a video right back here with Matt Singer for a second, because you know Matt's been selling for three months, right? Second month he makes ten thousand dollars. He's a construction worker, right? Been in the military, right? And he's a comedian, which we're going to get some jokes out of him in a little bit, right? Here's my point. Every one of you guys is built differently, right? Every single one of you. Look, some of you guys look a certain way, and as the world looks at you, they're like, that's what a successful person looks like. Dude, bull crap. I'm going to tell you, nobody can identify what the next millionaire looks like. There was like, I mean, it, got, it was like 1.5 millionaires made last year, right? In the U.S. New millionaires, okay? Yeah, but it's just a big number of new millionaires. I mean, millionaires are getting made faster than anything. So Brandon from Ohio, I can take him from New York, right? He can be the next millionaire. But honestly, you have to tap in to the other 80% of your brain that you're not using. And I want to share this with you. And this is kind of where um, we break across, and everybody's here, for, but we break across from the winners to the people that want to be winners, okay? So this is your journey, and this is your brain. And as I talk about mindset and I talk about pushing forward, I kind of draw these graphs because this is how I like to see things. I'm very visual. I write everything down. The whole time we talk today, I'll be writing stuff down. Towards the end, the last hour and a half that we're here, it will be all negotiating. If somebody has to get out of here, catch a plane, do whatever, that's cool, I got you, it's no big deal. But if the last part of this whole deal is gonna be us negotiating together up here on the board. It's gonna be killer. I train salesmen in this room all the time, right? From dealers, they send their guys here, and I get together, and after I teach them something, we get up on the board, we break into threes, and then we start negotiating. And it's really cool. It allows you to start memorizing what it is that you said, so pay attention, but write everything down. And our, our obvious, just, I mean, common sense is you, you learn something, you're not going to be able to duplicate it like immediately. But in 30 days from now, you can know it like you know your social, like you know your address, like you know your name, like you know your family's name. I mean, you can know, hey, Trayvon, you, come on in. You, you, you know everything, right? That's kind of what it's all about. Okay, so I just want to tell you guys that this right here, this 20%, would everybody agree right now where you're at? Okay, and, and I'm not sure the income levels because I don't think that even matters. I think it all starts from today forward where we're going. But right now, life is probably pretty easy, right? Okay, life is comfortable, okay? And I always will say this, you'll hear me say it, everything you want in life is right on the other side of you being uncomfortable. Everything, okay? The marriage the fatherhood that you want with your children, okay? The business that you want to have. A lot of you guys in here, you're like, hey, I don't want to work 80 hours a week. You know what I'm saying? I want to work 40 hours a week. Dude, that's what I want you guys to do. I get it, sometimes we have to ante up and go to 50, but who has to work 80? The guy that works 20% of his brain has to work 80 hours a week. That's who that guy is. Don't be him, because I've been him, okay? And what happens is because this is easy, and it's comfortable, and this is fun. It's fun to be a loser. You know why? Because it doesn't take much effort. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't take much effort not to make a bunch of money. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's where I live is in this uncomfortable zone now. And I've been living there for a long time because when I didn't, I was broke, I was stressed out. The number one thing to a salesman is the word consistency. Would you write? Would, would you agree? You guys, anybody that has a wife at home, when you bring home an $8,000 check one month, and then the next month you bring home a $3,500 check and they're like, okay, I don't even know how to pay our bills because I don't get it. And you're like, baby, I'm hustling, but look, you know, traffic, the dealership, guys, that stuff's over. From now on, winners focus on winning, losers focus on the winner, okay? You guys don't watch anyone anymore. Don't look at anyone else in your store to look up to. Unless you physically have a mentor inside the place that you work, I mean someone that you truly look up to, right? If I'm preaching at you make money, make money, make money, but don't take care of your family, I'm not a guy to be around, okay? Because when you do make money, and I teach you that, but you lose your family, you'll be empty. You'll have nothing. There's a difference between making money and being fulfilled, right? Okay? Guys, the fulfilled life is what we want. Would everybody agree we all want to stay in a beautiful state at all times?
Like, that's the goal, man. I mean, look, Robin Williams, he's a comedian, right? Killer comedian. How funny was that dude? He was like the funniest dude in the world. Well, guess what? That guy, he hung himself. He had more money than anybody. But why'd he kill himself? Because he was trying to please everyone else, and he didn't show himself self-love. I'm pretty sure of it, right? Because how can you get in that dark place and no one know about it? So the biggest deal to me is that your mindset is everything. Before we get into training, I need everybody to get into a mindset that, look, they're going to decide that this easy, comfortable, fun, good life ends right now. And what I mean by that, this is a good life. Okay? If you'll follow me on the journey and actually tap into the other 80% of your brain that you're not using, right? Because I'm going to teach you to close, right? When I teach you to close, are you really going to learn how to close? If you're truly going to learn, right? I mean, I mean, like, honestly, like, you are like, I'm not here to just, you know, like, yeah, yeah, okay, I got it. This guy showed us how to close. You go home, and guess what happens? Yeah, your dealer was right. What he meant to say was you weren't going to learn anything because no matter what it is you learned, you weren't going to apply it. Okay? That's the difference. It's not that they don't see the potential in you. You don't use what you could have used, what you learned, and put it into use. So I've got to get you to take the other 80% of this brain, and I want to start using it right now. Guys, like I said, I have a bad learning disability, but guess what? It doesn't stop me. I have to write everything down a million times on a spiral notebook. Guess what? That's the way that I do things, okay? So however it is that you learn, David, however you learn, right now you're going to figure it out. For, for 13 years, he's worked in a store, sold a ton of cars. Now it's time to start making big money. You know what your mind needs to do? Start learning to make big money because you're going to have to learn these closes. You're going to have to learn when you're sitting in front of somebody that when somebody says no, you don't fear it. Never fear no. No's a good thing. Closers want to hear the word no. Do you know why? So that they can understand the problem and turn it into a yes. They don't fear no. You guys can't fear anything. Think about the times that you sit down with somebody, right? And you're negotiating, and all of a sudden, you get butterflies in your stomach, right? You know what I'm saying? They're firing back. I'm not paying that. There's no ways. I'm not paying that. I want more for my trade. That's not enough. You know what? You're wasting our time. All of a sudden, guess what? How fast is the customer moving? Really fast. Is the customer more prepared to object than you are to overcome the objection? That's where I see guys get stuck and get broke. So the mindset has to be that, look, you're going to train hard right now, and when you guys leave at the end of the day, and I don't see you anymore, and you go back home, and I mean like physically, like face-to-face, -face, we're, we're going to run a mentorship for the next 90 days. My goal is I want to make videos every single week with all of you guys, right, on the negotiating so that everybody can send them to me so I can watch you guys grow and I'll help you, okay? Now watch this. If I tell you to make me a video, right, and you don't make it and send it to me, who's that on? That's on you, okay? Now, some of you guys are like, well, you know I mean? I don't have time for that. You don't have time not to do it. You literally, you, I can't afford it. It's like, I can't afford it. You can't afford not to do it. What do you mean? You got to think about this, okay? You're going to have to get away from this life. Now, let me explain this, what this great life looks like, okay? It's fulfilled. It's rewarding. It ha it's hard work. And this is what it looks like, okay? Failure, suffering, pain, more failure, self-doubt, right? Failure again, darkness, and then you hit the light. Does that make sense? Just look at this. How many times did I write failure in here? Over and over and over again, okay? Nobody's going to learn something and just take something that I teach them and then go to the, the, go to the field and use it. If I teach David, right, how to, how to hold on a trade because he's got customers that are, that are making trades all the time. Are we in an internet pricing world? Yeah, that didn't scare me. Where's the money going to come from? You can't be unethical and raise the price $3,000 on them when they came in on it and they're sitting in front of you. That's not the way to do it. The way to do it is be a good businessman and find another avenue where you can make your money, Right? There's holes all over a car deal, holes. And there's money in those holes. But your mind has to be so focused on where to find it. So let's say I teach you how to overcome, right? I want more for my trade. If you hear me say it and you kind of ideally get it, and then you go back into your store and the next time somebody says, I want more for my trade, David's going to say, I understand. 
Let me show you how we've arrived at the top dollar for your trade-in. And he's going to go into his little spill, and he's going to shut him down, and he's going to pick up $2,000 of gross on that deal, and now he's going to start making money. David, you sell 320 cars a year, right? This is pretty easy math. How much money does he have to run, Frankie, per commission to make 300 grand? Is that unrealistic? That's not unrealistic because some deals are going to make none and some deals are going to make a lot. And we have to start averaging in the big deals when we can make them. With guys that are upside down $10,000, I get it. That's not going to be your home run deal. It's going to be not going to be anybody's home run deal. You're going to have to take that deal and wrap it up. But when you see the money there, how many times do you guys get pencils and you know that the money's there to take, but you don't know how to take it, right? That's where it's at. Right, John? I mean, you're negotiating, you see the money, and here's the deal. Do your managers know where it's at? They don't know where it's at. They want to tell you they know where it's at, but I always like to say something like, I'm, and I don't, it's, I'm not saying it's disrespectful to ask your management, but like, hey, what's your year today? Like when you sold cars, how much money did you make? But I always like to probe into that softly and say, hey man, you were a pretty good salesman, right? Like, John, you were a pretty good salesman when you sold, right? John, let me ask you, when you sold, what was your best year selling cars? Uh, man, honestly, about 120,000. Guys, do you want to make $120,000? No, that's not the goal. Is your goal to make $100,000? Yes, but your goal is to figure out how many more times you can make $100,000 over and over and over and over through the year, okay? In, in order to get to that, and this is kind of how we'll finish here on mindset, is that like this great life, like they're fulfilled, like it looks like this. And everybody will ask you how you do it. Right? When you start making a bunny, how do you do it? You know how I do it. They'll know how you do it. It's here. Does anybody right now want to fail? No. I don't want to fail. Okay? Does anybody want to suffer? Does anybody in here want pain? Like, are you waking up asking for pain for breakfast? No. You don't want pain. Like, you really don't want it. We want this. This is what we want. We want the mommy. Hey, baby, everything's all right. Here's your milk. Right? Here's what we don't want, but what we need. This is what we have to have. In order for us to change, and like literally everybody's at different ages, but the point is, is since you're all over 18, the biggest deal is, is that you've gotten accustomed to a certain way of life. How can a child learn a language, right? From two to three years old and learn how to talk. Is that crazy? Are two-year-olds and three-year-olds smarter than us? No. They tap into a part of their brain because they don't know any better and they learn at like mass levels. Am I right? Okay, think about this. Who in here has kids? Raise your hand. All right, how many times have you guys, and I'm assuming, unless you have little tiny babies, if they can talk, are you going to teach them and tell them that they need to do better in school? They need to make better grades, that they're just going to have to learn. They're going to have to do this. They're going to have to do that, right? What about you as their father? I'm asking, like, can you tell your kid to do something that you're not willing to do yourself? Okay? I'm sitting there with my son, right? He's struggling with math. He's reading, and he's really good at reading, but he doesn't comprehend everything because when he takes the tests, he doesn't make the best grades on the test, but he's a good reader and he'll read to me, right? I'm not a good reader. I know where he gets it from. I can read great, I can read in front of you, but I don't comprehend what I'm reading, so I have to write it down to, re to, to understand it, right? So my deal is, is that I'm grinding this out with him. He was making a C, he, and he's in third grade, right? I mean, like this stuff, and now we got him to an A. But do you know what me and him went through to get him to an A? We went through this. Like literally, we went through this. I mean, you know, honey, how many times with Ian, when we've been training him, do we scream, yell, and just... It, because it's crazy, right? I mean, like, honestly, does anybody know what, uh, you know, what is the, the, the uh, preposition of the noun is? Anybody know what that is? Well, here's the deal. So we got a whole, whole room full of grown-ups that are really smart, right? And, and here we are. He's in first grade learning what's the preposition of the noun. And I'm like, okay, where's Google at, right? Like, you know, I need to go to her and figure out what this is. And I have to start relearning because I don't remember learning that in high school. You know, I'm just thinking about, well, that's kind of my point that, that, I, that I want to talk about is this right here, this is the, this is the zone you're going to have to get in, okay? So if, if I could say one thing and you guys take this with you when you go, look, 
there's, there's four things that I'll tell you that if you can overcome, you'll, you'll kill anyone in your dealership. Matter of fact, you'll, you'll, you'll be a GM, you can run your own stores, you can run a sales team, the payment's too high, the price is too high, I want more for my trade and I need to think about it. Those are the four things we get hit with every day. Would everybody agree? If those are things we're getting hit with every day, if you could just leave and you had those four things down, if Joe could handle those four, we're done. Like we're done. It's lights out. I, I don't need to teach you anything else. But in order for you to learn that, you're gonna have to live in this zone, okay? Right? Everybody. So I just wanna tell you, like, this is the mindset you gotta have. So on this journey, like, it's gonna suck. So I would tell you this, that in the sucking, the suck zone is where I make money and where I learn. Okay, so when I say it's gonna suck, a lot of people are like, oh, if this is gonna suck, I don't wanna do it. No, you wanna start falling in love with doing things that suck, okay? And here's my point, okay? Let's say we're all in here, and I was like, hey, we're gonna do a week course together. If, I could, if we could really do that, that would have been beautiful. You know why? Because the first thing that I would have done, this morning we would have met at 8 a.m., right? And we would have worked out and ran for two hours before we came in here. You know why? Just so everybody could get it in, and what I would do is I would put some stuff in there that we don't want. When, when everybody's writing a workout, what do they write? Arms, we, went by, we got to get nice biceps, right? Chest, right? Got to get a nice chest, right? Look at this. You're staying in this zone, right? Okay? Some of you guys are like, hey, I'm going to decide to get back in shape when I go home. Here's the deal. If this is what your workout looks like, do you think you're going to get in good shape and hit your goals? No. You're not going to. You may feel good, right? But you're not going to hit your goals. Over here, you want to hit your goals? When I say this to you, right, and, and some of you I could ask how much money, like Doug says he wants to make another $100,000 next year. That's his goal. He says, I need to make another hundred grand. okay? Some of you guys are like, I need to make 500 more grand. The bigger the goal, the more work. Watch this. Here's the deal. Does anybody think, I, I, I could go over and um, talk to anyone in here and say, hey, do you think it's possible for him to get a six pack? Can everybody get, can you get a six pack? Hell yeah, you can get a six pack. I'm asking you, does anybody think they could train him to get a six pack? Do you think that they could train him though if he didn't do the work to get the six pack? You could write the workout out, right? Honestly, I could write it out. Hey, I need you to do burpees. I need you to eat right. I need you to do this. I need you to do this. But guess what? The problem is, is that he's the one who's ultimately in control of himself. Who can change you? You. You. You're the only person that can change you. I can't change you. Listen, matter of fact, you can't change me, okay? And, and what's bad about it is, so I talk about Brian, right? Brian, you live in New Jersey, right? Think about this. Brian's in New Jersey. Dude, you've done real estate. You're back in car sales now. You've got some things going on, but you've lived your life a certain way, right? In that certain way, it's allowed you to live like this, right? Now, it's, it doesn't mean you have a lot of money, but it means it's pretty comfortable though right now, right? Listen, this life isn't stressful, okay? This isn't stressful. This is earning it. This is the rents due, okay? So let's just leave it at this when we, cut, when we end with mindset. The rents due every single day in this business. And I'm not talking it's rent due by like hours worked, okay? That's not how we pay the rent. If I could tell you guys one thing, I would recommend everybody going and getting a uh, maybe 36 by 36 whiteboard. Okay, you see these whiteboards right here that we're gonna work on? Baby, where do we get them at, Lowe's or something? We got them at Lowe's, you know why? You go order a whiteboard online, right? Dude, you get a nice whiteboard this big, it's like 600 bucks. You're like, oh my God, because it's got a nice border on it, it's got all that. We go to Lowe's and we tear these to pieces. We buy that nice whiteboard, you can go get a piece, ask them to cut it, and guess what? They're cheap, they're not expensive. Go in your garage, wherever it is you live, I don't care what it is. Put one in your bedroom. Is this, is this classy looking to look in your bedroom? No, but you'll never be broke again. Okay, that's my point. And paper, look, I'm a big paper writer, okay? Like I love writing stuff down on paper. But the biggest deal is, is that we're sitting here and I'm standing up. This is how your life looks. So let's say this eraser is a video recorder, right? I take this video recorder. And it's simple. And you may be, and I know, I know you're 58, right? Okay, he looks like he's 18. He's 58, and guess what? Do you, do you video record yourself much? It's not really what older people do. It's a young generation thing, right? 
Okay? But watch this. This is the only way you get good. Okay? You take a bottle of water, you set your phone up, you turn it around, you hit record. Okay? You turn around, you say, hey, the price is too high. I understand. Look, let me show you this. And then you just start working it out. You know what it is you want to say, right? You watched what I taught you, okay? So you're saying, oh, all right, okay, I got it. I'm going to make that happen. You don't got the whiteboard in your house. How are you going to work on it every day? You can't say, well, they got a whiteboard in the conference room at work. No, nobody's going to work when they're at work. What's seen in, in, in public is usually practiced in private, right? You know, like when no one's around, that's where the rent is paid, okay? The rent's not paid at work. Now look, when you're at work, do you have to outwork everybody? Yeah, you have to. Look, I'm gonna tell you this, nothing overrides hard work. Now that we got mindset, and when I say this, I talked about living in a beautiful state. Can I live in a beautiful state in this place? Yes, I can, okay, because I've made it a choice. Fulfilled life over money means this. I've decided that I've been living off 20% of my brain, probably 8%, okay? I mean, that's the truth, right? They talk about how much of our brain we really use. This other 80% that we're gonna tap into, doesn't want anything to do with this. From now on, when anything is easy, comfortable, simple, right? You don't wanna do it. Say no to it and walk away. You want and you're made to like watch TV and do fun stuff, right? But don't do it. Who in here watches Netflix? I like Netflix, but let me ask you this. That Netflix, is it costing you your hour a day you could spend training? If, you know, if David really wants to make you know, 300,000 next year, if that's really his goal in 2020, I will tell you this. Without a doubt, guys, do the math. If David sells 320 cars next year, just like he sold this year, if he can learn to be deadly at negotiating on the payments too high, prices too high, and I want more for my trade, and let, not letting customers leave by I need to think about it and I'll get back with you, just those four things, and he doesn't learn anything else, will his commissions go way up? Yes. You know what? That simple math right there, because he's been doing it the same way for 13 years, right? You're in a habit right now, and your habit it sucks, just like mine sucks. And I have to break it, right? Like it sucks, it's okay to say it sucks. Look, everybody's in a sensitive world, but you guys come so far, this isn't the sensitive group. You guys are like, dude, I wanna break the mold that I've been in, and I wanna change. Or you're doing good, and now you wanna do great. It's here. So as I just keep going through that, I'm just telling you, if it's not hard, it's not rewarding. It's not worth it, okay? So anyways, as we move on, this will be mindset. Um, Let's live in this zone the whole time. So when you guys get out of here, every, at the very end when we're done at like at five o'clock, and who's flying out today? We got one, everybody else flying out tomorrow? Oh, or driving, or driving, we're driving. Hey, here's the good deal. At five o'clock, you know what I'm saying, when we're done, one of the biggest deals that I would like to do with everybody is that like everybody, let's just sit down and talk about like the 24 hours for a minute. What it's gonna look like when you go back home. And honestly, at the end, I think that everybody, like if I do the payments too high, right? And I'm like, all right, so here's what I want you to do. I did a video that was like how to bump a guy 500 bucks. Well, here's the deal. I know you saw it, but you know how to do it. If you don't know how to do it, that's what I care about. And that's what you need to care about because you're going to be the one negotiating deals in your store. I can't go there with you. Okay. With that being said, in order to get there, I need, and A, I'm going to watch you guys negotiate it today, and maybe you don't do it to the fullness, and that's not what it's about us today. I just want you to kind of get a little bit into the, the idea and the feel of negotiating, but I want you to know that when you go back home, like, we're going to get a video in a week, and it's really simple. You're going to take a three-minute, five-minute, ten-minute video, and I want you to send it to me. And I want to help start watching each one of you guys like go to the next level. And some of you guys are like, well, I don't like video. And I know David, David, you probably don't video yourself, right? So if I ask you for a video, would you get me one? Watch this. That's you doing this. And watch this. I just have a deal. Send it to me. Don't make it 15 times. Me and you talked about this last night. It's not about you being perfect, okay? If Frankie sucks, Frankie, it's cool that you suck. Send it on. I want it. Huh? I don't think Frankie sucks, but here's my point. Is that I'm saying no matter who you are, if it's Joe, and Joe's like, well, I feel like I'm the worst negotiator out there. Guess what happens? You're going to get better every week. In 90 days from now, if you send me a video every single week, I'm going to tell you this. Will you have progress? Absolutely. What happens when you have progress? You feel alive. Think about it. Anybody that's in this room, if you guys have progress, you feel alive. 
So this mindset part, like you, you've got to live in this. This is what life is about. Everything else that we do, it doesn't matter if this doesn't happen. And then secondly, um, we'll, we'll get into hard work a little bit later on, but everybody knows that when you go back to work, starting from this point forward, guys, there's 60 minutes in an hour, right? So if I'm sitting here, and let's just say, um, I was looking for my, my marker, I don't know what I did with it. I don't think maybe I even had it, but um, there's that ADD. Uh, so I was taken and I, I write this, 60 minutes, right? Like literally, and I'll take a, a little mark, and I'll, I'll write down 60 just one little marks. And as I really view like each one of these, like this is a real minute, right? How much, what, what is the worst thing of car salesmen? Wasting time. Dude, you guys know what I'm talking about. It can be you, it can be someone else, okay? If you really wanna make a lot of money, it's easy to say it, right? Okay, do you know the craziest thing? Tony Robbins, I love him, right? We were talking about Jim Rohn, right? We were, he was talking about Jim Rohn last night. And, and Jim Rohn and to, Tony Robbins talked about how Jim told him that, listen, you're gonna do these seminars, you're gonna like have all these people come out to see you and you're gonna like talk to them about mindset, motivation, the fulfilled life, all the stuff that Tony Robbins talks about. But he said 10% are gonna go home and do something with it. 10%. He's like, it's not about the money. The people, they, they wanna spend their money so they feel good, right? Like that, that spending that money is what was the step. No, no, the step was so you can get the blueprint, right? I mean, I'm gonna give it to you. So you get the blueprint so that you can figure out how to do it. Well, I can tell you this, take one hour here, right? All right, so we go down again. Now, a guy's got four Facebook ads out, okay? Take another hour. Now a guy's got six Facebook ads out. I'm sorry, another 10 minutes. Watch this. How many minutes are there in an hour? 60. You've only worked 30 minutes when you go to work and you've got six Facebook ads. Now out of six Facebook ads, I'm pretty sure you can create anywhere from three to five leads at some point through that whole day. Okay? Those are leads that are coming to your own phone, right? Now watch. Just take this and do times two and let's just say we blocked off one hour to do Facebook. Guess what? And I'm just talking about example because there's two ways to make money. Some of you are like, well, I don't like Facebook. I don't do Facebook. I'm sorry what you don't like, but that's what you have to do. Like, this is what we do. Like, if people can't find you, if they can't find your cars, they can't buy from you, right? I mean, they have to know who you are. You know, if you're, if you're like, I don't like that, here's the deal. That's because you're over here. You're comfortable, right? I know you don't like it. I don't like doing burpees, but if you want to get a six pack, I mean, he's, he's going to have to do burpees. Like, it's just a part of the deal, and they suck. And, and you know what I'm saying? And he's going to have to jump rope, and he's going to have to do some running. He's going to have to do some stuff in there that he doesn't want to do to get to where it is that you want to go. But watch this. Once you do, you become addicted to it. Once you start understanding what a real hour looks like truly worked, what one real hour looks like, and you start seeing what all you can get done in one hour, dude, you're going to be like, oh, my God, I get eight of these? Think about it. I get eight hours to do work like this. Now, what is this guy making? This guy's making a ton of money, right? This is the blueprint. You make, so here's the deal. He does this times two. Now all of a sudden he's got 10 leads coming in out of the day. Out of 10 leads, he'll probably set 50% of those as appointments. He'll probably sell half of those. He sells two cars a day, every day off Facebook. Just by working one hour doing that, okay? I'll show you how to do it. Facebook is everything because it's free. I'm always taking advantage of free stuff, right? I mean, some of you guys might like wasting money, but I don't, I hate it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's my worst thing. So Facebook is free, and the cool deal about it is not even talking about getting into remarketing. I'm just talking about marketplace. Simple marketplace ads, right? And that's what you sold them off of, right? Okay. Austin, you've sold them off Facebook, right? Um, I know that you work Facebook, am I right? Does anyone else in here work Facebook at all? Do you guys work Facebook? And watch. And here, here's what I'll tell you. So I heard the word try, right? Right? That's a bad word. Okay? I love it. We're going we're gonna to identify. Just like I can't say a cuss word, if somebody says the word try or can't, they get punched too. Okay? And here's my point. I want to tell you this, that this is what one hour looks like. This is awesome. All right? Let's talk about hour two. What would hour two look like? Yeah, it'd be probably follow-up, right? What does your follow-up system look like? I mean, I'm going to ask you this. Truly, when I say this, 
That next 30 minutes, how many managers or salespeople do you sit in a store? You saw a guy come in yesterday or five days ago. Who, who in here has got a BDC internet department that does their follow-up for them? No? You got to do it on your own? I'm telling you this. Nobody's going to watch your money. Everybody understands that, right? Nobody cares about your money. Okay? So if you're counting on other people to take care of your money, it's never going to happen. Okay? So I'm sharing with you. All right? You say, all right, so we're just getting warmed up. We're going to get into some negotiating. We're going to start talking about actually getting into sales now. Look, you have a blueprint here that every minute, one minute, I test yourself to work. One minute for one real minute, okay? And I'm gonna tell you this right here. You guys are smart if you put timers on your phone. When I was in sales, you know those little watches that track how many feet you walk and all that? I didn't buy one for that. I, I tracked it for every hour. The reason why, I always say there's 60 minutes in an hour and how you work 60 minutes in that hour is a who you are. I wanted to go out, I wanted to go see my family, I wanted to go do things, I wanted to get out of here. So what I thought is, here's this whole group of people over here that are losers, and what it is is that they have no blueprint. I'm going to make a blueprint that actually the way that I work, I will be known in this company to be the hardest worker in this company. Even if I'm not the best closer yet, I will be, I'm definitely going to be the hardest worker. So when I started working, that 60 minutes in that hour was the way that I worked. So, I want to tell you this. People take for granted one minute, right? Isn't that pretty quick? I'm going to ask you this. And I, I went to jail when I was 19 for one day, okay? But what would, what would jail look like if you had to sit in jail? I don't I mean, some of you guys may have been to jail. Some of you guys may not. Here's my point. I, I say that as a purpose that, you know, sometimes things happen to people in life. Sometimes you get caught up in the wrong mix. I mean, who knows? Some of you guys never been in trouble. Maybe some of you guys have been in trouble. I got a DUI when I was 19. I spent one day in jail, okay? And that one day, it felt like freaking like eight months. You know what I'm saying? Like literally eight months. I was, there was a clock over on the end, and I'm watching that clock, and I'm just staring at it. And that clock was going so slow, man. It was like a second was like a minute. My point is, with that being said, I just wanted that time to get over with, and it wouldn't. Well, the problem is, you guys now want more time, and you want to slow down, so it won't. Does that make sense? It's like the craziest damn thing. It's a different effect, right? Okay? Some of you guys want to spend more time with your kids, and you want to see your family more, but the deal is, is that time's moving so fast, right? It's just like boom, boom, boom. All of a sudden, it's like every Sunday, you're taking the trash out. You're like, man, I'm not even living life. When you were in school, you were killing it. You know what I'm saying? Like literally you were killing it because you had all the time in the world. You still have all the time in the world, okay? So with that being said, I want to teach you how to take care of just one minute and use it right. Hey, Bubba. Um, okay, let's move on. We're going to start with the, the meet and greet. I want to talk about this real fast, okay? Because before we get into closing, so in this, uh, not the word track book, in, not the objection, right here. In this, in, this, in this little binder right here, after mindset, it goes into the meet and greet. And I, and I wrote down a couple points, okay? I talked about the first impression. I talked about finding common ground, right? Okay, making the customer number one. They're important, okay? On, on that first page, I'm just going to share this with you. Hey, who can close a customer? Like, who can that doesn't love them? Who can close them for all the money? Nobody. Guys, don't get so weighed up with making money. And watch this. Here's the craziest thing that blows me away about salespeople, is that what's the most important thing about selling a car? Relationship and rapport you have with your customer, right? I mean, listen, some of you that's been doing this longer than six months, you know what salespeople don't want to talk about? Meet and greet. You know what they think it sounds like? Like, that's beginner. Like, Frankie, if you're, you're in management, you, you paid all your guys in. Doug, if you have a sales meeting, right, and you want to have all your guys come in and you want to talk to them about the meet and greet, do they get jacked up? No. Nobody wants to talk about the meet and greet. But what happens if we don't have a good relationship with the customers we're working to deal with? You can't close nothing. This is probably one of the most biggest issues that I see with salespeople. Okay? You want to go and write the workout, right? But you don't want to do the work. You don't want to do the workout when it comes time. You want to close big deals, but you don't want to learn how to become deadly at building common ground with somebody, right? Building rapport with them. Watch this. 
You're not making money. You're sitting out there on the lot, right? You're like, man, I need to make some money. A customer pulls up. What happens? You've got, I need to make money on your face, right? Okay, now when I was a salesman and I sold, it was real simple. I used to count, hey, there's my Hummer payment, there's my Corvette payment, there's my house payment. You know, I would start counting people off because I had to do that because I can't pay the boat payment for $100. Does that make sense? Some of you guys are talking about car deals. I'm talking about making money, okay? So my deal is, is that as I start talking about making money, how do I make money? I make money by closing big deals, right? Do you see the difference? When you change your perspective but trying to get a car deal, right? Car deals don't mean nothing, okay? If I'm talking about Frankie running road sales, if he goes in and raises the, the store's units sold by 60 cars but he doesn't make any more gross, does that pay you anything? Nothing. What is the value of a $100 mini? Nothing. Are they going to be part of our life? Yes, they are going to come sometimes, and that sucks. I hate to talk about it, but sometimes there are going to be things that you can't control. But let me ask you this, okay? Customer comes in, they got bad credit, right? Everybody gets bad credit customers. Your finance guy says, hey, I can get this guy approved on a car. They want a lifted Tahoe. You know how it is, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, like, you know what it is. They want a, a Cadillac Escalade. You know what you can sell them? Brand new Dodge Dart. Guess what? Do you know how much money you can make on that brand new Dodge Dart on that bad credit customer? $5,000 front end. $8,000 front end. You can do one of two things, okay? You can either make this cursed customer love you, okay? And how can I influence and persuade and sell the situation and the idea that they don't need to buy the car, they need to buy what the car does for them, right? Which is build their credit, wrap my arms around them, right? And take them in so that they will buy this vehicle that they don't want to buy? I do that by having an unbelievable relationship with them, by being somebody that they believe they can trust in. So as I tell you this, if you guys are my sales team and I was in here and, and we were like, hey, we're going to go crush it today, the first thing that I would talk about is, hey, closing is overrated if you don't know how to do the meet and greet. Okay? If you don't know how to ask great questions and get great answers here in a minute and the fact find qualify, dude, you're not ever going to close a big deal. You know why? Because you're never going to put anybody on the right car. Dude, you know, how, you know what it's like trying to close a customer on a big payment when you're not getting paid for it? Right? Doesn't that suck? I mean, think about it. Landing them on the right car is everything. Well, you would say, where does that come into play? Well, that comes into play with fact, find, qualify, right? But also, you, you have to know your inventory. When you're doing the meet and greet, these are all the beginning parts I want to talk about. When you're doing the meet and greet, how important is it for you to know your inventory? Does anybody in here know their inventory very well at their store? Like the back of their hand? Good. If you know your inventory like the back of the hand, you will make the most money. Every morning, you guys should be getting with your managers and asking them this. Hey, what are the trades that came in the night before? What did we steal? What do we own back a book, right? Okay. Do you guys have tools on your phone where you can book cards out? Do you have access to inventory sheets where your manager will show you how much you own a car for? Guys, I'm going to tell you, everybody's in a different situation, okay? But do you know what? One thing is for sure, if a manager believes in you and trusts in you, he'll give you that. Will you give him those sheets? You'll give him any, any inventory sheet he wants. Will you give him the tool that he can download on his phone, Viato, where he can book out his cars so he knows what his cars are worth? Yeah. If you can trust him, you can't give it to a new guy, okay? But you can give it to a guy that's making you money that you trust. Okay, so when I tell you this, like the beginning of you going back, you got the blueprint, you got how you're going to make it, you've got your mind right. Now when you're going to work, can you make people fall in love with you within two minutes? That's the biggest deal. Okay, what is a master closer? A master closer is anybody that can walk into any situation, any, okay, and close it down, or close the deal down and close it down probably within a minute or two. Okay, you know those guys that are in the dealerships that they call like the closers, right? Now look, some of them close deals and they don't make money and some of them are like the real deal closers, okay? And my closers that worked for me, the biggest deal that I train them on when I, when I start training a closer is I, tra I train them to build common ground with people. Hey, they like race cars? What do they like? They like sports? Are they in the military? What do they, what, what do, they do? You have to start talking about something else before you start talking about the deal. So if you guys want to grow and move in to be a closer for your store, right? There's a difference between being a salesman and then closing your own deals, right? 
Would everybody agree like there's at some point where you're going to stop being a salesman and you're probably going to move into management? And when you move into management, what are you going to do? Well, you didn't shake their hand. You didn't go meet them. You know what I'm saying? You maybe got involved for a minute or two, but you haven't been involved in the whole deal. Since you haven't been involved in the whole deal, what do you have to do? You have to walk in and you have to build a relationship very, very fast, right? Has anybody taken a TO on someone else's deal? It's like this. How long do you got to make a great first impression? About five seconds, okay? So when you walk in, you're like, hey man, what's going on? How you guys doing? Nice, hey, welcome to the store. And as I sit down and I kind of put my arm around them and I'm talking to them for a second, I know this, I ain't talking about this deal. I'm not gonna talk about it, okay? I want you to understand this. Just like you guys in the beginning are going up and shaking somebody's hand, I know you got car deal on the brain, okay? You got make money on the brain. That's a no, they know that. You have to take their mind psychologically and get them off of that before you can get into that, okay? You think they don't know that you're there to close the deal? Your customers, whenever you go shake their hand and you see them outside, you don't think that they know that you're the dude that's gonna to try to sell them a car? They know who you are. You can't remind them of a salesperson. Look, if I come out and I talk to you and I got something to sell, think about this. Anytime you've ever wanted to buy something, right? If you go into a place to buy a refrigerator, right? Or, or to look at one even. If a guy walks up to you and he just starts talking to you about the refrigerator, what will you get straight to? Prices, deals, how much does it cost? You know what I'm saying? Questions, are quick questions. Do you give a shit about this? Oh, oh damn it. Yeah. All right, that's one right here, that's one. All right, let's see if I can do something good to earn it and take it back. All right, hey, do you care about that person? No, I mean, the deal is like, did, like, did you really care? No. What you're doing is you're just trying to pick his brain how much this costs, what do you get with it, and then you want to get out and make a decision based off of no emotion, right? Whether you should do it or not. Does that make sense? Now watch this. If you go out and talk to a customer, or if, I'm sorry, if you're going to buy a refrigerator, but a guy walks up and is like, hey man, what's going on? Hey, Doug, what's your name? He says, Doug. I say, cool. What, what brings you in looking for a refrigerator? Well, we're having issues with ours at home. Oh my gosh, when you say home, where, where's that? And Norman, cool, I love Norman. Norman's one of my favorite places. Have you been to Norman for long? No, well, yeah, we've been there for five years. In the same home? Awesome. Now, was, was the refrigerator new when you guys bought it there, or was it already in the house, or did you buy a newer one? Okay, awesome, so it's like a bank account. Deposit, right? Withdrawal. Deposit, withdrawal. Can you withdraw money out of the bank if you hadn't deposited nothing? No. And then I can say something to them like, you know, along the lines of like, hey, so uh, when you say home, I'm thinking family, right? How many kids do you have? have awesome, what are their ages? 24, 22, and 17. First of all, number one, you don't even look old enough to have kids that old, is that real? Did you start having them at 10? <laughs> Hey, watch this. Now I'm just getting along with them, right? Does anybody see how that just happened like real fast? Here's the kicker, okay? Now, are we talking about refrigerators? Yeah, kinda. Not really yet though. We're just kinda having fun a little bit, right? But now, me and you kinda like, we don't have that wall between us. There's not like I'm selling something and you're buying something, okay? Like we're not, because we're friends now, right? And I'll continue this conversation for a minute or two just like that. Guys, and I want to tell you, that may seem that that's not, that's overrated, right? That that's not important. Anybody in here, try to close a car deal, okay? Try to close a deal with somebody that you don't have a relationship with, okay? Try to go sell someone a car in a minute that you have no relationship with. If you're trying to switch somebody to a different car, can you do that with no relationship? No. All I ever had to do was go and level up, level up, level up, level up. Sky's the limit, numbers up, numbers up, numbers up. Like when you sell, I want you to think about yourself, okay? When you sell, are you putting the spotlight on you or are you putting it on the customer? Which one? Customer. Putting it on your customer. And then number two, right? So think about it. Is the spotlight on you? Or is it on your customer? Have you ever been somewhere and somebody's telling you how like what, what they've done? how cool they are, what they do there, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're like the number one dude. Don't, nobody cares about that. They really don't care, okay? And I'm not saying that that doesn't come up at some point, but people don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. When they care about you, now they wanna know that you're the number one dude, now they like that. But if they know that before they know how much you care about them, you're screwed, okay? So I just wanna share with you that your goal is, is to keep your customer in the spotlight, okay? So I would say like, 
and, and we're going to move on. But here's a, here's a salesman. And here's a customer. And this is how you will make a lot of money in life. Okay? You're holding a spotlight in your hand and you're shining it on them. This is your spotlight. And I have used this analogy and this was one of the biggest deals that helped me in life. Who's in the spotlight? The customer. Who's holding the spotlight? The salesman. Okay? What does everybody always hear in car dealerships? I know you guys have heard this. Get control of your customers. Get control of your customers, right? Like get control is everything. But how you get control is by letting them stay in the spotlight. Okay? If you're the one doing all the talking, won't your customers tell you how to close them in the end? Yeah? Won't they tell you ways and angles that you can maneuver through the cell? Yeah? But how can you talk, right? Or how can you close them if you don't let them talk? One of the worst things that salesmen can do is talk too much, okay? Talking too much will cost you a lot of money. Because honestly, watch this. And I'm just going to share some things with you. You can find out who you are. But watch. So, and I'll, I'll use David as an example. David, you've been in your job for 13 years, right? You know your job pretty well, okay? You know the pricing, the rebates, the discounting. You know the stuff you offer. You know this, right? You know all that, right? Maybe, and I'm not saying this is you, okay? We're talking about negotiating. But you could be giving some of that information up without even knowing it, okay? And that could be costing you money, okay? Let the customers just talk. I always like to ask questions, and then I like to let people talk, okay? So now that we're in the fact, find, qualify, right? Remember, we talked about meet and greet. Obviously, if you don't get this down and you don't understand it by now, at the end of the day, I'll be happy to go over it with you. I put up two videos in the last week on meet and greet. Meet and greet, meet and greet. Because honestly, I feel like it's overlooked. I feel like guys want to be great at closing, but I feel like they don't know how to build common ground with people. As I look around, I'm always looking, right? And I'm, I'm looking for something, right? Like, he's got an Under Armour jacket, right? I mean, obviously, we all saw, uh, you know, Singer's got a military jacket on, right? Am I right? That jacket, we could all start a conversation with you based on that jacket. We could talk to him for an hour on that jacket. You know what I'm saying? The deal is, is that you have to find something to talk about, okay? Sports apparel, military, license plate, workout. I mean, you know, I, I see him. You can obviously tell he works out. I see him. He works out. I, I, I look, I, I try to pick up things. Like, he's, he's got a great beard, right? He's got one of the best beards I've ever seen, right? You know, I could be like, dude, you look like that guy in that beard magazine. That's awesome. Like, you have the best beard I've ever seen in my life. Now, you may think that that sounds weird, but it's actually a compliment because he actually does spend a lot of time on your beard, right? See? See? Right there. I could talk about his beard for five minutes, Okay. That may sound silly, right? You're, you've got a good beard, but he, he spends time. It needs trimmed. I know he, he's got that beard. He signed up on that beard deal. You know what I'm saying? He's got a great beard. Okay? And I don't have one, but I can always tell. Like I pick up on little things. I guess that's what I'm asking you to do is to be able to start understanding how to pick up on little things, okay? You need to be so aware, right? Like my wife's always saying, listen. Like you need to listen. You know why, and, and listen, this is no disrespect to us as men, but I train some women right now that are killing it. It's almost unfair. They're, they're, and listen, they are taking what I teach a man, okay? Here's a man. Right here, we'll call this a man and a woman. And, and this right here, it kind of pisses me off a little bit, but it's the truth, and, I, and I, I love it, but it shows me that men don't listen enough, Okay? You guys just, were, or just want to get through it so you can start talking again. Guess what? Women, they slow down and they listen to everything you're saying. And then if I tell them, here's the blueprint and this is what to go do, they'll just go do it. Like, it's the craziest thing. And the fact is, because they listen and they go do it. Like, I got some, some, some girls right now that we're training. And they're making 100000 their first year. They just got in. I mean, dude, like, the marketplace isn't ready for women to come into it yet. Why? Because women, they're unthreatened, right? Like, I mean, most of the time, men have been in dealerships and we have sold people cars, right? So as I'm a male and I come up to shake somebody's hand, haven't those people already identified me as a male that has done business with them before? Yeah, but a woman, they haven't done business with before. So they don't identify them as a threat. Does that make sense? I mean, it's like almost like a ninja sniper sliding in. My wife, when, when she closed... And she used to work in a Harley store forever, and she worked in F&I forever. I mean, dude, they just, they weren't ready for it. 
And I just want to tell you that us as men, though, we have to understand that, you know, I feel like we can crush it. But as women come in, they're just listening. And all I want to tell you is you have to listen because this customer is going to tell you how to sell them. Okay. Now, when I talk about letting people talk, what does that mean? All right. Let's go to the meet and greet. And I'm like really going to explain. One, number one, this customer feels a little bit like they like you. People don't buy from, uh, you know, people that they don't like. They buy from people they like. All right, we'll go to fact, find, qualify. Okay, this, is, this right here is where I'm going to show you this spotlight comes in. Okay, so in this fact, on this fact, find, qualify, I start out with the deal. It says, ask great questions, get great answers. You, you notice number two, this is probably my favorite, trade questions. The guy in here that can talk about what it is that they're driving in life right now will know exactly how to close, sell, land, and do everything else for the rest of the sell. Why do I love trade questions? Because trade questions are everything. Who answers trade questions? The customer, because they're the one that's going to give you the information. What do people like to do? Talk. What do they want to do? Talk about themselves and their situation. And all you have to do is ask a couple of great questions. So number one, ask great questions, get great answers, right? Ask great questions. What are we going to ask great questions about? We're going to ask great questions about the trade. You see this customer? You see this car that's sitting here next to him? This car right here is the magic, okay? This will tell you everything. So when I think about um, the, the next one, which is surfacing hot buttons, and the next one, which is budget, this trade's going to tell me everything. What is the trade question I can ask? Well, so, like, here's one. John, what's up? Great question. I'm going to ask you this. Truthfully in this room, every time someone pulls up, you're taking two minutes to build a best friend with them, right? Who's really starting on the trade? A lot of people aren't. You know why? They start asking questions like, what are you looking for today? Right? And then, oh, okay, so like four-wheel drive, do you need a crew cab or an extended cab? Right? And then, you know, how much weight are you pulling? Okay, and then what are you going to be doing with it? And all of a sudden, it's like we're not getting some of these magic questions that we need. So the magic questions, they all start right here with the trade. So another deal, so I'll start here and I'll say, hey, uh, so number one, obviously it seems like you got a wonderful family, right? And I'm glad that you're from here and I'm glad that we got a good relationship now. But let's just slow down. So I'm looking at your Honda here, right? Um, how long have you had it? Okay, that's the question. How long, right? And we're talking about the trade. So we're going to say, how long have you had it? Okay, and then they're going to say a question. And I'm going to say, okay, so did you buy it brand new? Why is that important? Because you want to know if they're used to buying things new or used to buying things used. Okay, and then watch this. That question John just asked, right? So I'll say, you know, how long have you had it? Did you buy it new? And then he could say, man, when you bought it, right, what were two of the main or two or three of the main reasons why... You spent the money on it. Why did you buy it? What were the two you know, or three main reasons why you bought it, Gian? Why did you buy that Honda? What were the two main, two or three reasons why you bought it? Cool, awesome. Gas mileage, reliability. Was it the warranty that, that caught you on, or did you just know that Hondas ran a long time, so you wanted to own a Honda? Awesome, awesome. So it didn't have to be new or used. You just like Hondas, am I right? Okay, cool. What are two to three things that you don't like about it now? That, 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 that's why you're here, you know what I'm saying, to maybe do business with us. Do you see how this trade will tell you everything? I want to tell you guys this right now. If we could just stop right here and we didn't even get into closing. If you guys would never in your life get into selecting a vehicle until you find everything out about this trade in, Right? Watch this. What's always on the back of a car? Almost every car. Branding. Br branding. Branding from a dealer that they bought before. Now listen, like me, you know, we're going to take that stuff off. You know what I'm saying? Right? And you guys may be a little OCD or when you, you spend, you know, 50 grand on something, you may go outside and be like, okay, we're getting that off there. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people, they don't worry about it. Hell, I see people two years from now, they just got stock stickers rolling around in their window. <laughs> I'm like, a stock sticker? Come on, man. Shoot, man.
Yeah, and listen, and that, that, that could be a good question, right? The, the bottom line is, is that you want to find out. So everybody sells different, right? I want you to understand this. Yeah, personality is different. Him, he's very professional, right? I can tell by talking to him. Every time I talk to him, he's very, since he was in a real estate game for a long time, would you agree real estate people are a lot different than car salesmen? They really are, okay? A lot of, a lot of real estate guys invest in themselves and invest in schooling. Car salesmen don't. There is a difference, okay? There's a lot of difference in the, the way that they talk, too. I'm not saying that's a bad thing or one's right and the other's wrong. But I know this, car salesmen, this is the hardest business in the world to make it. It really is. But it's also the easiest business in the world to make it. Okay? If you can become killer at selling cars, killer, you can go into any other job in the world and crush it. Okay? Okay? So listen. So I have guys, my buddy, uh, he asked me to go train an RV company. Right? So listen, this is kind of funny, right? I'm a person that don't say no to anything. I mean, I'll, I'll say no to like my time, you know, if somebody's trying to take my time when I'm spending time with my family. But like if I tell Frankie, I'm like, hey, Frankie, I want you to go train these guys on RVs. You're like, all right, cool. When's the training? Guess what? Do I know anything about RVs? No. <laughs> Nothing. You know what I know? Some of them have engines, some of them don't. Most of them you pull, right? They've got beds in them and stuff. You know what I'm saying? But bottom line, isn't it really all the same? You know what happens? I walk into this RV deal and I've got these nine people that all look like they're dead in a coffin, right? I mean, honestly. And I just start talking to them. And I start going into this and we get into closing. And every one of them is just like... And they're just writing like this. And when I'm done with the owner, the guy goes, I have no idea. Like, this is amazing. Like, we've never, ever in our lives seen anything like this. Anyways, their store's up about 30 to 40% now. They're killing it. They're making more gross. They're selling more cars. And that was really just on the negotiations and closing side and helping them make more money. Because in RVs, you know, you can finance for freaking 15 years. You know what I'm saying? If you could finance a $30,000 car for 15 years... <laughs> We would be in trouble, okay? But with that, and plus their carries are huge. But my point is with that being said though, guess what? The RV business is 20 years behind car sales. They're 20 years behind. You know, we spend a lot of our time in Mexico and Mexico is like what, 50 years behind the States, roughly? You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like they're a little behind, you know what I'm saying? So guess what? You get a chance to see in the car business that you guys are the best salesmen in the country. If you can sell cars, you can do anything. So some of you guys at some point may want to switch jobs or do whatever, you're going to kill it. If you can kill car sales, you can kill anything. You know what I'm saying? You may decide to take a real estate job. But I mean, if you can kill it in this one, you can do whatever. You can get on the road, you can do anything, you can take any job you want, it doesn't matter. Would you agree the sales industry pays everybody a lot of money? $60 trillion a year business now? That's crazy, okay? Look, you don't have to stay in car sales your whole life, okay? I may not even. I'm going to be honest with you. I think I am, right? But how many times do we think we're going to do something that we don't end up doing, right? I want to tell you something. The car business is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Because everyone else sucks at it so bad because they can't even do simple little things like this. They just want to go out and show somebody a car so bad, get them to test drive it, and then say they want to take it home. That's all they care about. They have that on the brain. They're fogged. Okay? You want to make money? Is that really what you want? You really want to make a lot of money? Slow down. Slow down, man. So check this out. Here's your trade. You're sitting in front of it. Okay? And watch this. What if I ask this question? Hey, now, um, so, look, so you guys obviously have this Honda. Are you guys going to be trading it in today? Uh, no, we're actually not trading in. Okay, cool. So you're looking to maybe buy another vehicle. Is that right? Yeah. We're going to be looking at buying another vehicle. We're going to give this one to our daughter. Okay, cool. Hey, you mind if I ask a question? Watch. The car that's sitting in front of me, did they not buy it for themselves and they're about to give it to their daughter? Yeah. Would I ask the same questions? How long have you had your Honda? Where did you buy it? Did you buy it new? What were three reasons why you bought it? Do you see how I can ask that same question? This trade is going to tell you everything. Now, my second part is, after you ask a couple questions about the trade, I like asking what they like and what they don't like. Why? Because that will kind of give you some leveraging points, okay? Okay, budget. How do you ask budget questions on the fact find qualify? Let's ask some of you guys. That's a great question. Write it down. That's a good one. What are you trying to accomplish? What else? Frankie, what do you ask? Like, tell me, what does that mean? Like, say it to me. So instead of just what payment you want to get paid, I've got vehicles for $500 a month. 
Cool. Hey, did you see what he said? Instead of asking, do you feel like this question, which way do you feel like would be more beneficial? What kind of payment are you looking to stay around today? That's a dangerous question, right? What kind of payment am I looking to stay around? You don't, do you really want the answer to that? Uh-uh. Let's just say like in an ideal world, how are you thinking about structure? Yeah, but watch this. No, I like that. Listen, remember how we're all built different? Listen, I like that. Okay, that's good. How are you looking at structuring? Because honestly, every state is different, okay? I may take New York different from Oklahoma. Am I right? Okay, look, do you know what the finance penetration is in Oklahoma? It's 90%. Okay, that's a big finance penetration, right? That means this. Nine out of ten people, right, want to finance their vehicle. If that's the truth, what does that mean? Payments are pretty dang important. Would you agree? Okay. What you guys can any of you guys can go back to your store right now, go to your FNI director and say, hey, what is our finance penetration roughly in this store? What percentage of people finance with us? Uh, 70%. Cool. So you know seven out of ten. So when you're talking to ten people, you know in your store, commonly seven out of ten people are talking about finance. And that means seven out of ten people are probably gonna want to talk about a payment at some point. Does that make sense? No matter how educated they are, they're gonna want to get into payments at some point. Um, but so uh, another question that you could ask that is probably one of my um, favorite things, and what he just said is he goes, hey, man, we have some cars that range anywhere from you know, 500 a month to 1,500 a month on our lot, right? What range were you hoping to stay around? You know, that could be a question, right? But you know how you probably threw out the first number and your goal was probably a higher number? Even before you get into budget, what would be a great, a great uh, question to ask on this trade? Yeah, what are you paying on your trade now? You know what I'm saying? Like, truthfully, look, I know when a guy rolls up in a Benz, okay, or a Bentley, like, I'm not asking the guy what he's making his payment on his car now. I'm just going to treat him like a billionaire, and I'm going to get him to spend money like a billionaire. Yeah, that's another deal I was about to say, is that asking somebody a question. So, now on your Honda, right, um, did you finance it with a, a local credit union? Because we actually use all the local banks. They say, Oh, no, we actually finance it through Honda Finance. Oh, okay, cool, man. They got pretty good rates most of the time, right? Um, how do, what, what, what is your payment roughly on it? They'll tell you, and as soon as they tell you, no matter what they say, wow, how'd you get it so low? You're either going to get one or two things. Well, I don't think it was very low, right? Oh, okay, okay. Wow, it, it seems kind of low, but maybe it's not. And they're going to tell you, and now that will tell you some stuff that you can use, or what if the guy goes and says, well, see, how did you get it so low? They say, well, I put $4,000 down. Uh, okay, well, now I know what I'm negotiating later, right? Guess what? Because of the fact he told me he put four grand down, when I'm working payments with him, he's like, there's no way I can afford that. Well, remember on your last car, right? You, you did put 4000 down when you bought it. You're not putting that 4000 down today like you did the last time. You see what I'm saying? Guys, this trade tells you everything, okay? Everything. And then I always start by, where did you buy your last car from? Like, where did you buy it from? And then I always like to ask questions like this. So, uh, so where did you buy the Honda from? Oh, we bought it for ABC Honda down the street. Awesome, you know what, I know a guy that works there. Did you like doing business with him? You can ask that question. Fact, find, qualify, that is for you to get an opportunity to put this customer in the spotlight that you just built a friend with, to talk about like their last experience at the car deal, um, their trade-in, the payments they're paying, things they like, things they don't like, then you're ready to move to vehicle selection. And I wanna share with you, based on the information you grab here, okay, this is probably the world that we're in now. You have one or two roads, right? You have a credit road, and the next one, we're heading to the lot. Would you agree? That's the life of a salesman, okay? You do one, meet, greet, two, Fact, find, qualify, and then guess what? You're ready to go to vehicle selection. Yeah, well, and obviously, look, when you're asking questions, I mean, you guys should be able, remember I said pay attention to shirts to build common ground? Pay attention to what they're saying. I always talk about the sticker on the back of the car, going back to that. I'll walk around it. When I see, I mean, you guys know your area pretty well where you live, right? Okay? You know where the subprime lending is. You know the holes, okay? So where I live, I know if it says Express Credit Auto in the back, like 
I know what Express Credit Auto is. You know what I'm saying? Like, because that's in our state. Okay, you guys have a buy here, pay here in your company, right? In your state and somewhere. And, you know, what, what is yours? What, what, what is yours where you live around? Wow, okay. <laughs> but, it, hey, if you see Express Credit Auto, I can say, oh, okay, cool. Now, is Express Credit Auto your still, still your lender? Yeah. Okay, awesome, man. And how do you like doing business with them? Okay, that's no big deal. And do you think that there would be any reason why you wouldn't be able to finance with a primary lender today? Okay, awesome. You know what I like to do? So I have this little machine that's pretty simple. I basically put two seconds of information in, and then you trading in your car, getting a vehicle like you want to buy, in the, in the payment range that you want to be in, I can get two seconds of information. In just two minutes, I can get a list of all the cars that will work perfect for that. That would be okay with you? Yes. Cool, follow me inside. Let's handle this. Done. Guess what I'm doing? I'm going the credit road, right? Did you hear that? I'm going to give them a list of cars in the payment range they want to be at, trading their car in, and then in the end they can make the decision. They're like, oh, that sounds amazing. Is there a list of cars? <laughs> no, there is going to be. <laughs> no, no, but listen, there might be a list. There might be a list, but what I care about is the one car that does a two-way street deal that allows them to get a vehicle and that allows me to actually pay my bills and make money. Do you guys understand this? That bad credit is one of the most beautiful things in the world. Because people that have bad credit, okay, you know how bad they want to build their credit up? They want to build it up big time. Subprime lending right now is hot. The market on subprime lending is strong. If you guys are in a store that your F&I guy or your desk man knows how to get bad credit done, I want to tell you, you can team up with him and you can learn some of these things that I will teach you and you will kill it. But I want you to understand something, okay? That manager that can get your loan done has nothing to do with you making money, okay? It's, it's, it's kind of 20% of it. The other 80% of it is can you close somebody, can you on, close them on buying a vehicle that they don't want to buy? The answer is can you or can't you? Somebody will. You think they're going to buy an Escalade? No. They're not buying from an Escalade from anyone. But what happens is they run across Lewis, right? And then Lewis is trying to tell them like, hey, you know, your credit's not that good, so we can't start out with the, you know, an Escalade today. You know what I'm saying? But I got a Nissan Rogue that's like, you know, it's really cool. It gets great gas mileage. She's like, I ain't buying no Nissan Rogue. And guess what? That's the end of it. His manager comes in and says, well, we can get you approved. You think there's anybody selling there? No. There's no selling going on. Now watch this. If I made Lewis fall in love with me, right? He loves me. If I put the spotlight on him, I ask great questions, get great answers. I went through this trade, right? And I was talking to them about like, hey, now Express Credit Auto, right? Do you, do you pay bi-weekly or is it a monthly payment you pay? Monthly. Okay, awesome. And whenever you did your loan with them, right? Have you made your payments on time? Do you feel like we could go to a primary lender now to kind of get your foot in the, the next direction, get you with a nationwide lender? Absolutely. And is building credit important to you? Me and you are going to get along awesome. I have one of the best credit lending companies in the country. Not only do we use 60 banks, but we actually use nationwide lenders that actually take people like you, great people that are wanting to build their credit and take them to the next level. You're going to love this. That's it. Guess what happens? Now when I sit down with them, I can say, hey, remember a minute ago when I asked you how important it is to build your credit, right? I care about you. I care about that. First of all, number one, I don't want to sell you the car you just buy today. I want to buy, sell you every car you buy for the rest of your life. Now, I want to tell you this. When I get your credit and I go inside, right? Remember, we're gonna, the lot's still over here, but we're talking about credit for a minute. Because what is the biggest mistake you can do? Get someone, find out that there's a little... Do you see how I said, is there any reason why you think you wouldn't be able to finance with the primary lender today? Do you think there would be any reason? I asked that question because I smell that I need to ask that question. Does that make sense? Like, Doug, do you think there's any reason why you think you wouldn't be able to finance with the primary lender today? Uh, no, we've made our payments and we had a couple medical collections, but we should be okay. Whoa, don't go to the lot. Stop. Yes, don't do it, okay? Listen, I'm telling you this. Hey, here's what I'd like to do. I got this little machine, right? It's called a computer. It's a little tiny box. Basically, I type your information <laughs> in. No, but you, but you see how I'm typing my fingers and I'm doing this? Like, you think this is crazy, but this is how I sell. 
So Doug, I have this little box, right? It's pretty simple, it's called a computer. I type your information in it. We have created it where we can take a customer like you, great customers with a great family, enter your information in, notice I'm complimenting them along the way, then I say, I enter two seconds of information, how long did it take? Two seconds, it's really a little bit longer. But you know what? I say two seconds, because that sounds like it's convenient. And then I say, and what we do is when we enter your information in, it spits out a list of all the vehicles that you just told me that you're interested in, in a payment range that you want trading your car in. And then I'll show you the list and you can pick the one that works best for you. Would that be okay? That'd be great. Who wouldn't follow you inside with that? Who wouldn't? In, in, in my deal, my finance manager refuses to take a credit unless they go out. Unless you got a car first. Because they don't want to be involved. It's crazy. So I asked my manager, well, I, I want a full credit. Do you live in a subprime market? Yeah. Then you know what I would say? This customer request, right? that we help, we help them find which vehicle will work back for them. But here's my point. Hey, if I have to, listen, go into the gray a little bit. My customer's requesting, right, that we actually get two seconds of information so that they can help us land them on the right car for them. What manager is gonna be like, oh, okay, that sounds great. And then guess what happens? Let's get their credit, and then that's when I called, let's set up the sell. You guys wanna make a bunch of money? Can you set up a cell? Can you close a cell that hasn't been set up yet? No, that's the problem. A lot of times people don't set up the cell, okay? Let me explain this to you. If you miss this point, you're gonna pay for it. And this means this, if a customer says to you, right, that they want to buy a Cadillac Escalade, now I'm using this as a point, you can fill that car in with anything. And you know, you work at a, uh, what, what store? Um, what do, you, what do you sell new at your store? What's the rebate car? A Civic? There's got to be a rebate car. Huh? A Civic. Does it have a rebate on it? Is there rebates on it? Cool. CRV. That may be the car. Everybody knows what their SpyFi car in here is, right? If you work for Dodge Jeep Chrysler, right? I mean, what, what is it now? Is it the 200? They, make, they don't even make that anymore. What do they make? Renegade. Perfect. He, they make a Jeep, Jeep Renegade. If you're going to sell a new car, well, what's a rebate on one, roughly? 6,500, listen, if a, if a customer can budget for a payment for something like that, that's the one you're putting them on, right? Listen, any customer that pulls into his store with bad credit, they rolling out in a Renegade, okay? It's a Renegade special, that's what we do. If you work in a Chevy store, what's a SpyFi car for a Chevy store? Spark, Spark. ugliest car ever made in the world. <laughs> Guess what happened? But it, hey, let me ask you this, I wanna ask you a question, right? Hey. If you, wanted, if, you, if you didn't have a perfect smile, let's just say you needed braces, right? I'm gonna ask you this. Would you take braces for a year so that you could have something you don't want so you can get something that you do want for the rest of your life? Would you take braces for a year so you can have a perfect smile for the rest of your life? Would the juice be worth the squeeze to get the braces? Even pay for the braces you don't want to get the perfect smile you do want? Would that be worth it? The sparks, the braces. That's it. Okay, I want you to understand this. You have to be able to talk like that to your customers. Okay, now you're not automatically telling them on the lot, like, hey, I've got a Chevy Spark that we may have to take. No, 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 you gotta set up the sell. Once you get the credit, okay, and your manager says, hey, I can get this guy approved, ask him. What, this is a question you have to be direct with with your management. What is the car that I can sell my customer that will make me the most money. All I ever had to do was go and level up, level up, level up, level up. Sky's the limit, numbers up, numbers up, numbers up.